There was a series I did called Here to There, and it was all about vision. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Another preacher said it like this, where there is no vision, the people go to another parish. (laughs) Where there is no vision, people perish. So what I did in this series, and and I did it on Wednesday nights, and I, I waited for the moment that I could bring it back on a Sunday and do a series on Sunday. And with our vision of loyal to the future, I felt like it was the right time. Now here's the struggle I have with Preachers that get up and they say, you need a vision, you need a vision, you need a vision, you're going to die without a vision, your family's going to be a failure without a vision, your marriage is not going to last unless you have a vision. And they would preach that. But no one ever told me, how do I get a vision? And I would wake, I would walk out of the service more discouraged than when I came in because I knew the importance of a vision, I just didn't know how to get a vision. Is you would go home and you would pray and, and, you, and you wouldn't get anything. Nothing would enter your spirit. But God broke it open to me that not only do you need a vision, I'm going to show you how to get a vision today and over the next few weeks. Now, here is the question. I'm going to ask you this every Sunday. What would you accomplish if you had unlimited funds, unlimited creative ideas, and unlimited resources. Think about that for a moment. What would you accomplish if you had unlimited funds, creative ideas, unlimited resources? Now, let me set a scenario with you. A person invites you out to lunch. When you sit down at the lunch table, they ask you, they say, What is your vision? Do you have an answer? Now, here is the problem. Here's what you didn't know. That person had a $1 million check. And if you would have told them a vision, they would have written a check to fund your vision. But because you sat there and had no vision to share, there was no resources provided. I think a lot of times the reason we don't see the blessings of God show up in our life is not a lack of faith. It's a lack of vision. Because why is God going to provide for something you can't see? Why is God going to provide for something you can't believe for? Where there is no vision, the people, one version says, cast off restraints and they run wild. So I'm going to talk to you today about here to there. What is a vision? A vision is a picture of the future that creates passion in people. John Maxwell said, where there's faith in the future, there's hope in the present. In other words, your current present was once your past future. So what you're living in today, right now, used to be your future. But now you're here. So what is next? And that's where the idea of here to there came from. There's a couple points before I start breaking down here to there. Here's number one. It's the little things that defeat big futures. Stop thinking it takes something big to derail you and stop your vision. No, it is the little things you're doing that is is either going to push you closer to your vision or hold you back from ever getting there. Number two, what you see there will determine whether or not you leave here. I'll explain that in a moment. Number three. How you get there will determine how long you stay there. In other words, there is no shortcut to vision. Well, you know, I've got this idea of a body image. I've got this idea of health. I've got this idea of finances. There is no shortcut to getting to your vision. Because how you get there will determine how long you stay there. And if you try to take a shortcut, then you're going to find a shortcut to get back out of your vision. I need the journey to my vision because it's the journey that prepares me to live in the vision. There was a day that City Gate Church didn't have a building. And I had a there. And I knew what the there looked like. And I could describe the there. But I I couldn't see it. I didn't know how God was going to do it. But I knew the there. Well, now we're here. But can I tell you, it's what I learned in four and a half years that's helping us to grow now that we're here. If I would have taken a shortcut, we'd all been in big trouble. 
When President Kennedy said, we choose to go to the moon, all he did for the nation was says, we are here, but we choose to go there. Now, who can tell me the shortcut between here and the moon? There isn't one. But there are detours. There's no shortcut to your vision, but there are detours. And that's why we adopted the phrase NASA. And what does loyal to the future, what does all this mean? It's taken us back to a time where people spent more time looking up at what was possible than down at what is currently happening. I want you to dream big. I want you to get your faith for the impossible. Elder Steve looks great today. Run up here, Elder Steve. You look so good. I got to show you off, man. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. But he's got this great pair of shoes on. And what I love about this pair of shoes, he told me, is on the back, it says, don't tell me the sky is the limit. There's footprints on the moon. Yeah. That's good. Who is telling you there's a limit to your vision? What would you do if there was no limit to finances, no limit to creativity, no limit to ideas? What would you dream is possible? If you've got an idea right now, if there's something that just begins to stir in your heart, then you've got a there. Since it's Super Bowl Sunday, let me draw it out as a NFL coach. So you know they use all their little X's and O's, right? You are... Here. Here. This is there. You need to go from here to there. Good news. If you're here and you know a there, you've got vision. Give yourselves a big hand. You didn't even realize you had a vision. Watch. It's as simple as this. Let's break it down a little bit. If you have one credit card debt, but you say, you know what? I believe one day I could be completely out of debt. You've got to there. If you're trying to work out and you're saying, you know what? I just want to lose 20 pounds. Good for you. You're here. You've got to there. Maybe it's, I want to see all my children saved because you've got some kids that aren't serving the Lord. Good news. You're here, but at least you've got to there. Now, without a there, you'll perish here. You'll run wild here. You'll go aimlessly through life having no idea why you're even on planet earth if you don't have a there. But the moment God puts a there in your spirit, now you've got a vision that's driving your life. And let me tell you what it'll do. It'll keep you from going here, 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 and here and hanging around with the wrong people. You will find you people who are going to help you get to there and you're gonna get rid of the people that are trying to keep you here. How come I can't get in that relationship? If you're single, why can't I get in that relationship? Because that doesn't line up with my there. I dream of starting a business. Do you have a business now? No, then you're here. But I dream of starting one, you have a there. Now here's what happens. Here's where we get in trouble. We start here, we start there. Now how do I leave here? The only way I can leave here is I've got to realize how bad it is here, but how good it's going to be there. So here's how I move from here to there. Number one, I wake up every day and start reminding myself of how good there looks. Let me tell you about my there. My there is my genes from when I was 18 years old fit again. Amen. That's my there. Start talking about it. Start dreaming about it. Find, find images that you can hang up on a vision board so that you can see it and you can say, oh, look how good it is there. Look how amazing it's going to be there. I dreamed of us having a building. We, we were here. We didn't have a building, but, but I saw it there and I saw everything we could do if we, if we had a place that was ours. And, and I would dream about that there and I had pictures of the there and I had visions and I would talk about when we get there, here's what it's going to be. Then you've got to remind yourself how bad here is and why you can't stay here. Why can't I stay here? Because if we stay here, if we stay here, then we're going to teach our children to live in debt. That's why we can't stay here. 
If, if we stay here, then, then, then this is going to happen, and, and this, we're going to outgrow this, and, and then our growth is going to stop, and our potential is going to stop. So this is why we can't stay here. Well, where are you going? We're going there, but let me tell you how good there is. Let me tell you what there looks like. Let me tell you what there smells like. People who have a vision can smell there. They can, I mean, it's just, it's so in them. They can taste it. They can feel it. They can see it. They dream about it. If you ever catch them just daydreaming, they're probably thinking about there. They're so obsessed and overwhelmed, they can't even sleep at night because all they've got in their heart is thinking about there. When I get there, look at, look at Moses leading the children of Israel out of bondage. I'm taking you to a promised land that is flowing with milk and honey. But let me tell you why you can't stay here. Because you don't want to raise another generation in Egyptian slavery and bondage. You don't want to raise another generation feeling the whip of the taskmaster. But how about there? When you get there, you go from being a slave to a son. When you get there, it's you, you own. Instead of working for what somebody else owns, it's yours. God's given you possession over the land. Does anybody have a there? Give God a big praise. Now here's the two things to hear to there. Once you start out, you get something called starting momentum, beginning momentum. Whenever you start something, this is why most gyms cover their yearly budget in January. Because everybody's got momentum to start right. I want to see you on February. I want to see you in March. Are you still going to the gym? Are you still exercising? Are you still keeping up with it? Are you still doing the things that you said you needed to do? When you, when you start, you're going to get beginning momentum, and it's going to push you. When you get close to there, you're going to get something called ending momentum. If you've ever been close to a vision being completed, it creates so much excitement that it almost drives itself. When, when this building opened up to us, we practically remodeled this entire place in four weeks. You say, how did you do that? We were closer to there than we had ever been. And it created its own momentum, its own gravity. It was pulling us. So where do people get in trouble? They get in trouble right here. It's the middle. And just like when the children of Israel were coming out of bondage of Egypt and on their way to the promised land... They started looking at Moses saying, why can't we go back? We had onions in Egypt. We had garlic in Egypt. Now think about that. The best thing they could find about Egypt was onions and garlic. Let's go back to onions and garlic. What was happening was they were losing their vision for there. And it happens when you get stuck in the middle. So how do I continue to move forward if I'm right now in the middle of my vision? The, the beginning momentum is wearing off. I have not reached the place that ending momentum is picking up. I'm stuck in the middle. What do I do? Whenever you get stuck in the middle, two things. You have to start reminding yourself and everybody around you how great there is. And then you got to look back and tell people why we couldn't stay here. Remind yourself where you're going and then tell the yourself why I couldn't stay in this place one more day longer. We can't stay here. We have to go there. So I was thinking about this because I can promise you something that tonight every football team, both football teams, and all year long every football team was thinking about one thing. We're here we need to go there. So now two people have made it to the Super Bowl. And can I tell you what they're thinking about? What are we going to need to do to get all the way there? We're almost there, but that's not good enough. There's been a lot of momentum building up this week, but we're still not there yet. If we want to be there, we're going to have to do this, and we're going to have to do this, and we're going to have to do this, and we're going to have to do this. But let me talk to you about the danger of the middle. It's the 50-yard line. You know, when you watch the football game tonight, something really powerful happens at the 50-yard line. And this is why the devil will fight you at your 50-yard lines. When I'm back here and I've received a kickoff, then I've taken possession in my territory. 
So they'll say, if the Patriots receive a kick, they'll say they got them backed up to the 20-yard line, the Patriots' 20-yard line. But once I get to the 50 and I take one step over, I'm no longer on my territory. I'm now into the opponent's territory. I got to preach this thing. We're going to have fun. (laughs) Help me out. Here we go. How do you know when you're in the middle and about to cross over because there are too many weak Christians that are constantly having to fight the devil because the devil keeps backing them up. Aren't you tired of being backed up? Aren't you ready to take over? Aren't you ready to be an overcomer? I'm tired of living on this side of the middle. I'm ready to push forward. I'm going into enemy hell territory and I know it's not coming without a fight. Somebody give God a big praise. What do they say? I got them backed up, got them backed up, got them backed up. But the moment I step over, now they've got their opponent backed up, got their opponent backed up, got their opponent backed up. See, that's my vision for you this year. No more running in retreat. No more you being backed up and your family being backed up and your marriage. No, 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 honey. You're going to fight. How do I know I'm about to cross over? Because that's why the devil's fighting you the way he's fighting you. Because you're about to take territory. Give God a big praise. Now, every, every, both teams will start running plays. And here's what the two plays, here's what the plays will be based on. Number one, we're here. Number two, we need to get there. What play do I need to run to get from here to there? If I pick the right play, I move closer to there. But if I do the wrong play, then I have to stay here. And I can even get detoured backwards, further away from seeing my vision come to pass. This is why you've got to trust somebody who can read the defense better than you. So when God gives you an instruction, he's not doing it to hurt you. He's doing it because he sees what you can't see. He sees that there's a safety hidden out over there that you're not aware of that wants to take the ball of vision from your life and run it in the opposite direction. So God will call a play and you'll say, God, that doesn't make any sense. It's not your place to argue with the coach. He sees what you can't. Run up here, Blake. Help me out real quick. So there are two basically primary plays. Run run back here. So here we are. We're here, Blake. Mm -hmm. We need to get there. You did a good job today. We're here. We need to get there. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even plan on matching. I mean, this is sad. No, it's not. It's sad. All righty. Here we go. Here's, here, now, now look, I know there's a whole bunch of plays, but there's, there's really just two primary plays that this offense is going to run. The first play is a running play. Now what's going to happen is, stand back a little bit, I'm going to hike the ball, I'm the quarterback, I've got the ball, and I'm going to turn to Blake. Now he's going to take one step, one tiny step, and I'm going to put it in his stomach And then he's going to have to run. And he's going to have to move forward and fight through the defense. When you are learning, when when you are young in your faith and you are learning what it means to be saved, you will see blessings show up in your life before you get home from church. You pray for toothpaste, you get home, there's toothpaste samples in your mailbox. That's the way it'll happen. And God will bless you before the attack. What's he doing is he's building your faith. He knows you can't take big steps yet, but even a little step, he'll put a blessing in your life before the devil can take it away. And when the devil hits you, you're like, oh, but I'm already blessed. Let me deal with something real quick. Do you know how many plays will happen tonight that that handoff will be given and the running back will make it to the line, maybe even a few inches forward, and then he'll be tackled? If he's moving closer but doesn't get to the touchdown, doesn't get to the end zone, is he still successful? Yes, because he's moving to there. 
Can we stop getting angry at people who are young in their faith and they're doing their best and maybe they take a step forward but they fall? Well, you should be further than you are right now. But are they still moving forward? I'm not interested in how far they got. I just want to know, are they moving forward? And can we get behind them and can we support them and say, come on, you're closer to there than you've ever been. You left here and now you're closer to there. Next Sunday, right? Next Sunday's anointing service. Is that right? Do I got that right? You know what I think I may do after the anointing service? Is I may have a bless out service. And here's why. We have too many Monday morning quarterbacks in the church. And I thought instead of just anointing people to stay, maybe we should anoint some folks to leave. Because if you're going to sit around and just criticize those who are doing their best to move forward, then maybe this isn't the church for you. As you can see, we're running out of space. We need your seat. I don't need some Monday morning quarterback who's never even stepped on a field telling me how to do my job and how to do what God's put in my heart to do. Maybe we have a bless out service next Sunday. That was personal. So watch, I'm getting ready to hit the defense. So I turn and I give him the blessing before he encounters opposition. But there's another play. Go out. This is a pass play. Now on this pass, on this play, watch, just walk it through slowly. I'm going to hike the ball. He's going to have to fight the defense before blessing ever shows up in his life. This is how you know you're growing in your faith. This is when you start walking it out, but you haven't even seen the evidence of a blessing there yet. This is called living by faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. He's fighting and hasn't even seen the blessing if it's on the way. He doesn't know if what he's doing is worth it. He doesn't know if what he's doing is working. He's just running by faith. But guess what? As a quarterback, I'm already moving in the same direction. And what he didn't know was, before he ever got to his place, I had already released a blessing in the air so that it was going to meet him there. There's going to be some days you got to run before you see it. You got to run before you feel it. You got to shout. You got to praise. Yeah, but there's all kinds of hell going on in my life. Yeah, but I know God's already released it in my future and I'm on my way. Somebody give God a big praise in this room. Come on. You ready? Hike. Where'd you go? No, you went the wrong direction. You don't tell me where to throw it. And some of you are arguing with God, saying, I want the blessing here. I want the blessing now. I want it to show up at this time. And God's saying, you don't tell me where to throw it. You go where I tell you. You move when I tell you. You give when I tell you. You forgive when I tell you. You shout when I tell you. You praise when I tell you. You're not God. You're not calling the plays. Oh, I feel God in this room today. Yeah, but God, I wanted it right here. And God said you were surrounded by three enemies that if I were to release a blessing, they would have stole it before you ever put one hand on it. I'm telling you to move because I'm taking you to a place where I can bring the blessing in your life. Now, let's try this again. I want you to go out. I want you to do a slant to the right. You got it? Yes. Ready? Hike. Hike. Here we go. Before he ever even gets there, the blessing was on the way. He was running, but the blessing was on the way. Here's what I want you to do this time, Blake. I want you to come back, come back, come back. I want you to go to the 50-yard line and, and just 50-yard line, go up the side and then slant to the right. You ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. Let's do one more. You ready? This time we're going to do a hook. I want you to go to the 50 and I want you to turn around. When you catch it, I want you to go. Get it. I want you to catch it. Ready? Go. Boom. Now go. Go. 
You say, what was that? There's a phrase called turn and burn. Look at somebody and say, turn and burn. Because sometimes the devil will let you catch it if he knows you're not going to keep moving in the direction that God wanted you to go. He'll let blessings come into your life as long as you stop moving forward. He'll let you catch some healing. He'll let you catch some deliverance. He'll let you catch some financial blessings as long as he knows that you'll stop right here and do your little dance. There you go. Look at you on the 50-yard line. You so silly. You stopped when you should have turned and burned. The moment you get the blessing, it's not the time I stop. I'm going to turn because there's so much more. High five five people and tell them, turn and burn. I caught it, now I'm satisfied. I caught it, now I'm complacent. I caught it, now I'm comfortable. Honey, you didn't score yet. You haven't made a difference yet. The moment God blessed you is so you can keep moving forward to the there that he's prepared for you. You ready? Get to the end zone, okay? Ready? Just go up, slant right. Go. Look at that. Oh, that was my bad. I'm not God. And I'm not. See, it's slick. Football slick. You thought it was my fault. It's not my fault. Ready? Go. Here we go. Look at that. Boom. Where is it? You scored. End zone dance. We gotta have an end zone dance. That nothing. That's all you. <laughs> that's the best you got. What happens? when they score a touchdown in the end zone. They celebrate. They do an end zone dance, right? They do their, the icky shuffle. Anybody remember the icky shuffle, right? Up, what to, what, what to, what, what, uh, 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 boom. Icky shuffle. And then, then there was what Deion Sanders was, right? Right? I'm 100% white. My middle name's Deion. My middle name's Deion, but I didn't get that gift. And, you, and they celebrate because they made it there. There ought to be a period in your life where you can stop and say, look how far I've come. I started all the way back and now here I am. I've got a new here, which means there's a new there down the road. But before I even think about that, why don't I celebrate what God's done in my life to move me from here to there? If anybody has ever reached to there, I dare you to give God an end zone praise, a celebration. Look at the defense. Tell him you tried to stop me. You tried to hold me back, but I fall through. Look at somebody say, I want to see your end zone dance. You ain't got one. Stay standing with me. I'm almost done. But watch. What do they do? So do you think, who, who's, who's a, a running, Gronk, right? Gronkowski. So you think when he scores in the end zone tonight, that the, when he scores a touchdown, let's say he does a dance, is that it? Super Bowl over? No. Drops the ball, and he goes back because he's got a new there. Can I tell you about vision? Whenever you move from here to there and you get there, your new there becomes here. And God says, you think that was fun. Now you got a new there in your life. And now you're going to get beginning momentum again. You're going to feel that ending momentum. You're going to have to fight in the middle all over again. But if that there was great, 
how greater is the second they're going to be? (laughs) Friends, the Bible does not say that God takes us to glory. It says he takes us from glory to glory. Don't get satisfied with where you are. You've not made it yet. Do you want to know when you can do your final end zone dance? When you get to heaven. That's your, that's your last one. And guess what? That dance is going to last for all eternity. But while you're here on this earth, you got to keep moving from here to there. And when I get there, it becomes my here. And i got a new there. This is how I wake up every morning. This is how you ought to wake up every morning. Instead of waking up and living in the here that this is all there is, wake up and start reminding yourself how great there is going to be. And maybe God will send the blessing before I hit the defense, but maybe, just maybe, I'm going to have to run this one out. And I may not even see the blessing, feel the blessing, or hear the blessing. But if I trust, I don't trust me, I trust my quarterback. And if he told me that something's coming right here, then I'm going to get in position. And when I'm in position, that's when the blessing shows up.